first of all, the Supreme Father to whom we know in different names, God, Allah, We are sitting in the platform of Brahma Kumaris. The picture behind me is the Supreme Father, Point of Light. Under this hood, we work on changing transformation of the world. Anubhuti Meditation Center and everyone else who belongs to this center, special thanks. We are running this series. I don't know how long it will last because I'm going to do it very slowly. If you have any questions, you are most welcome to ask. Doctors, doctor's upbringing is very stiff, especially allopathic doctors. And uh, the, especially the subject of the clinical research it's very, very rigid. We don't intend to change a lot. If I say, share about myself, I was always skeptical about all these healing methods. Uh, my subconscious was not believing in it. Even after I came to Brahma Kumaris, I was not believing in it. But after listening, to some of the Brahmakumaris discourses, I started thinking about it. The daily discourse in Brahmakumaris is called Murli. And in that, the father is saying, especially for the doctors, the father has said that whatever health problems you have, experiment, the, uh, experiment on your health, the experiment of yoga. So I, I was a little bit convinced that yes, I can do that experiment. Whoever is doing chakra healing, they say uh, one by one, uh, they do healing of uh, one by one chakra. And the, in Parma Kumaris, the father says, the Supreme Father says that experiment uh, the variety of doing yoga. So that interested me. And when I go out, I face mixed audience and they ask questions. They ask questions like, what is the difference between the yoga meditation taught in Rama Kumaris and what meditation taught in chakra healing? What is the difference? So up until I don't know about it, how would I be able to say the difference? So that inspired me to learn it. So whatever I learned, I am going to present that to all of you. So in Rama Kumari's meditation, we consider that we ourselves is the soul, not this body. And we connect to that point, the supreme point of light, Supreme Father. 
So we connect with the Supreme Healer. He is the source of energy. And we receive this energy at a certain uh, part of the body and then the healing happens. And the first slide, this is from Ayurveda. The, in the ancient time in India, Ayurveda, who found Ayurveda, he is known as the oldest surgeon in the whole world. And that science is called Shushruta. And he researched all this without microscope. It was all his wisdom, wisdom of the third eye. In the Shushrut Sanhita, that the scripture of this science, there are many surgeries described. Isn't that amazing? It, this is 5,000 year old science. We don't know what, uh, how was the medical system in that time. So they used to collect the dead bodies from the water, running water, and then they separate the layers of the skin. So in the slide, we can see uh, the epidermis and dermis. This is what is seen in, under the microscope. But 5,000 years ago, how did the Shushruta know that there are seven layers in, under the skin? So definitely the sages in that ancient time in India were uh, really uh, wisdomful. We cannot see the seven layers with this physical eyes. It must be the third eye of wisdom. Ayurveda has, there are four Vedas in, in the history of India. And the fourth Veda, so the fourth scripture is Atharva Veda. In this text, they have described like these five subtle bodies. There are sub scriptures in this big scripture. In the Sanskrit, they are called as Panchakosha, five kosha, means five bodies. If you want to uh, get healed from any disease or sickness, then we need to understand the body in very much detail. Uh, unless we learn about learn the details about body, we cannot heal body. What in I found interesting is this five bodies, five subtle bodies or five layers are meeting, matching with Brahma Kumari's knowledge. This is described in the scriptures of yoga as well. So the kosha means layers. The external most is called the anamaya kosha means the physical body. And this is the gross, most gross form of the body. All rest of the four we cannot see. In, according to 
allopathic and modern sciences, whatever is not visible does not exist. So the ancient yogis use, was able, were able to see this from their divine eyes. The next one is the pranamai kosha, means energy body. Most of the healing happens in the energy body. Third one is the manumai kosha, means emotional body. I get so many cases. They have complaints uh, for their emotions, emotional up and down. They have different pains in the body without any uh, underground sicknesses. All the reports are normal. But they do have pain. So that is emotional body. And emotions stay trapped in the body. Whenever someone feels the fear, in English they say, uh, I feel butterfly in my stomach. So, so emotions are connected with abdomen. The emotions just sit in our body. We will also explore how we can do emotional healing. There is a way of releasing trapped emotions by uh, being a yogi and raja yogi. It is well explained uh, in the books that the ulcer in the stomach is not caused by what you eat, but it is main, mainly caused by what you think. And what's your, and we often say the phrase, my gut feeling. So we feel emotions in our gut. If we feel hurt, if we feel uh, someone uh, emotionally hurt us, we feel that in our stomach and it gets trapped inside there. Sometimes people say, uh, some of, uh, when they feel upsetting, they say, this is going in my head. That means they're getting irritated. So where, wherever the emotions go, we feel aches and pains or some sort of abnormalities in that part of the body. And the fourth one is the Vigyan Mai Kosha. In English, it's a wisdom body. According to Raja Yoga, mind, intellect, and orientation, that's the wisdom. The, these factors are responsible to keep us either healthy or unhealthy. And the last one is the Anandamaya Kosha, bliss body. So this five body, the description of this five body, I was wondering that on which base they describe this. And how we can reach to these bodies, these layers of body. So how we show in Raja Yoga, our body is formed as per our uh, virtues and vices 
and the orientation of the soul of the energy living in the body. I will explain gradually everything about this. Right now, what see what see in our body is the Anamaya Kosha, the physical body. Some may be able to see the energy body or other body. I had some revelations in my uh, spiritual journey, but it doesn't matter much. I had revelations of light, the energy light. And me, myself, being a doctor, I was uh, thinking that I have some vision problems. And there is a little saying, phrase in, in uh, Hindi that I see stars in the daylight. And then the doctor prescribed some vitamins to me. Even after I took the uh, vitamins, it didn't make much difference in what the visions I had about the light. And then I talked with uh, seniors in Brahma Kumaras. They explained that you are seeing the revelations. I asked, what does it mean? So at this moment, you just remember this, that the healing uh, of chakras, whatever we work on is, is the pranic healing. So the physical body and the energy body, these are the two things. We need to understand this quite well. The energy body is the energy flowing in the physical body. So the soul and the body, they are two different entities. And if they are two different entities, how, where are they connected? how they are connected. So when we study Raja Yoga meditation, then we come to know that I am separate from my body. And I'm connected through something with the body. And that's very interesting. If someone leaves the body, We often say that uh, in, in Hindi, they say pran left. In literal meaning, the energy left. So the energy who was living in the body left the body, so the body is dead. And they are connected with a cord, and the cord is invisible. We will see that later on. how we try to be in the energy body, more and more healing happens. 
So Tai Chi, this is also a sor sort of energy from each part of our body, energy reflects. But the best, uh, in the most form, the energy flows from our eyes and the hands. So in, in Hindi, they often uh, say that if your loving eyes are being on us, then uh, it's my fortune. So it's the vision they talk about here. So the eyes gets the eyes are closure to the energy inside the head. It is considered that energy in the body lives in the center of the head and the eyes are the closest organ which points outwardly. So the eyes radiates the energy best. And then there is other, another saying is your blessing uh, hand is on my head. So here again, uh, hand, hand, hands are the second uh, body part from which the energy flows well. So this is all the game of internal energy. We in Brahma Kumaris call it dance of Shiv Shakti. So if we know how to play this game, we can heal, do a lot of healing. So this is Tai Ji. You can experiment that we have this energy in abundance. So if we can just rub our palms together and these energies are active in morning and evening and morning is the best time if you rub your palms together and then separate your palms and then close palms and take them away bring them close and take them away. And then slowly we will start feeling the magnetic pull. And the more yogi you are, you can send your energy to far distance. It's called distant healing. I was not feeling I was not believing in this type of healing, to be uh, frank with you. But in the Brahma Kumari's history, uh, I read that uh, the founding father of Brahma Kumari's, Brahma Baba, he stayed up uh, and, and did yoga for a uh, very staunch child at that time. The Brahma Baba was in uh, at some place in Mount Abu in, in India, and uh, the child was somewhere else in India. And then he trans Baba Brahma Baba kept trans transferring energy to the sick person. He practiced the distant healing. The energy is passing to others from far away. Just like that, we can heal ourselves. In Bharat, there was a tradition in India, there was a tradition that in ancient time, it was a uh, tradition to heal the chakras daily. It, as soon as they wake up in the morning, they used to chant five shlokas. 
even i was not doing it but but when i started studying this spirituality then i started doing that those sanskrit shlokas had distinct meaning of each word and as soon as they used to wake up in the morning they used to uh, open the palms and look in their palms and they there there is a certain spot for each healing uh, energy in our palms and they used to chant for that there is another shloka the for it's something like vishnu pas vishnu patni namastubhyam it means as soon as we wake up in the morning we put our feet on the earth in 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 india we consider ours as mother so before we put our feet on earth let us ask for forgiveness what what a sensitivity and the shloka says further that i am putting my feet on you so please forgive me and when they take shower they used to take shower they used to take names of big rivers in india all the pure rivers big rivers of india they used to remember the names and they used uh, they were just sending the salutes to the water element and then they used to uh, take energy from all nine planets and then the energy from brahma vishnu shankar there are shlokas for each and every uh, of these acts so can we imagine how sensitive people used to be in that ancient time so we don't do any of this they used to invoke energy from all these elements and then they used there is a uh, a set of eight shlokas for sun and the sun, sun god is considered as he is the destroyer of all the seeds and that resembles a lot with the brahma kumaris uh, tradition that energy from the supreme point of light destroys all of our seeds so all in all they used to take power from all five elements sun and different gods planets so these are all energy bodies so let's see how modern medicine sees about chakras some has connected the chakras with endocrine glands the hormonal glands in the body so the glands are uh, literally translated in hindi as a, as knots so the knots in the energy body has to be removed
I don't know whether this is a coincidence or not, but these hormonal glands are the same number as the chakras. So, so in the bottom, the reproductive system, and then, then comes the kidney area. There is adrenal gland. They are called suprarenal gland. And that pumps adrenaline in our body. And then little higher up, pancreas is the gland. It is very interesting that pancreas uh, releases digestive juices and also releases insulin. That is the spot for Manipur Chakra. Manipur Chakra is like fire. So it is said, uh, it is uh, if the pancreas splits in the body, it can create a lot of uh, havoc in the body and it is very, very painful. So it's like a fire. So the, the Muladhar Chakra, Swadhisthan Chakra, Manipur Chakra, and higher up, there is a thymus gland by the heart. It is behind the chest bone. Above that, in the throat, it's Vishuddha chakra. Over there, we have two glands, thyroid and parathyroid. We will learn more about it as we go further. And uh, higher up in the forehead, center of the forehead, it is. It used to be considered as a master of the all the glands, hypothalamus and pineal gland. All of these glands are collaborating with our chakras. So when we are talking about the chakras and we are dissecting the body, this is our spine. It, there is a very interesting technique is the Alexander technique. If the spine is erect, we can save ourselves from many sicknesses if our posture is not correct then the energy alignment is not correct and then we feel sick so what we see in the spine that there are a bunch of nerves uh, coming out of each vertebrae There are cervical nerves, thoracic nerves, lumbar and sacral nerves, and the coccygeal, the, the end most part of, there is also like a tail uh, like structure. That's coda equina. So the, the, uh, group of nerves, they are together at different level in along the spinal cord is the cervical plexus in the neck, brachial plexus by uh, shoulder, lumbar. Then there is a lumbosacral plexus in the corda equina. So we, as we saw that in, in that five body, that if we remove something from the minute level, 
we see the effect of it on the gross level. So the neck level is called the cervical. The back uh, behind the chest portion is thoracic nerves. Ab abdominal is called the lumbar and the lowest is called sacral. And then the lowest, the, the tail kind of thing is called coccyx, coccyx. So when a person walks, how the chakras work? Let's see how these chakras work when we walk. When we are walking, we are constantly emitting energy. We create an aura outside of our body. So it's kind of war, uh, kind of vortex, and there are these are energy centers, and it works both ways. The energy comes and goes. The if we read it, feeling centers, will center, and the mental centers. So this keeps going on, whether we are aware of it or not, whether we deliberately do it or not, but it just happens. And as per the modern science of quantum physics, quantum physics is beyond our understanding, but it's, it's really neat. If, you are sitting in USA and I'm sitting in India. I can man manipulate the energy around you in you, or I can send you uh, send you the healing energy. It's called the energy contact. We continuously are in being in energy contact. And a deep yogi would know about this energy contact. In whichever rooms you are sitting in your room or home, you are continuously taking energy. So this energy comes to us through these centers shown in the slide. Yogis can visualize this energy. And then we see the colors. It's called visible spectrum. We see the red, yellow, green, blue, and the violet. If we cannot see it, but we can feel it. I can feel the energy. Very few has the power, they can see the energy. We can see the colors of rainbow, Vibgyar. After that, the infrared and the ultraviolet, in, infra rays and ultraviolet rays, we cannot see. But those can be seen by some, whether we accept it or not. But it does exist. I said we have the chakra healing in each and every homes of India. I don't know in how many uh, homes they have tradition to salute on the feet.
So this old lady sitting on the bench, they were actually doing the chakra healing. See, the younger woman is touching the feet for blessing. So the energy from, we, we learn that energy flows through eyes and hands the most. See, the younger woman figure is touching the feet. So by touch, the energy is flowing. And then she kneels down. The pressure is it, at the lower center, lower center of the spine, where the energy gets activated. And then the old lady sitting on the bench puts her hand on the head. In modern medicine, that's where the fontanelles are there, where when the baby is newborn, those joints of the bones are open. In the Shastra, in the spiritual scriptures, they call it Brahma Randra, from where the Brahma energy enters in the body. It is considered as the opening of the Brahma. So she puts hand on the head, that's chakra healing. A lot is happening here. One is receiving, one is giver. not just from the elders, you can get the energy from anywhere. I remember uh, there is a hill station called Panchagini. And in, in the old times, uh, all the tuberculosis patients were sent to the healing center at that hill station. Why? Because the hill station is at a higher place and the air is very pure. And uh, over there, the yogis were doing a lot of tapasya, the penance, and the air, the moving air was like very pure and energyful. So the healing of Tuberculosis patients were was happening best over there. In the old times, in the joint families, the older people, the grandfathers and grand, grandparents, they had very genuine loving feelings for younger ones. And when they put their hand on someone's head, all the blockages uh, used to open. And this is studied very deeply in spirituality. And this is called as Shakti Pad. Shakti Pad. Means the Guru is transforming his powers to the followers, to the disciples. Anubhuti Retreat Center's name is very well known. They also do and give an Anubhuti the feel to all. So we're talking about Vivekanand, Swami Vivekanand and Paramhans. So the Vivekananda's guru was Paramhans. And he asked Vivekananda that, are you ready to receive the energy? And he said, he's ready. And the guru just touched his toe to Vivekananda. And then what happened, the, the Vivekananda went into trance for so many days. He did not even remember. 
that powerful it was. So when the founding father of uh, Raj, uh, Raja Yoga Brahma Kumaris, Brahma left his body, there was Dadi Prakash Mani uh, that was there uh, and the Brahma, Brahma Baba transferred the energy to from his hand to her hand. And then he made the Prakashmani Dadi instrument for the progress and advancement of the whole Brahma Kumaris University. And Prakashmani Dadi was the chief head from 1969 to 2010. And then under her, that was the energy transfer from Brahma Baba to her. And uh, Brahma Kumaris was spreaded throughout the globe during her. Conduction. In India, they say that these doctors' hand is good. Uh, I was thinking, why do they talk about the hand? So, when the doctor touches to the patient, a lot happens. The energy transfers, the, the higher energy from doctor transfers to patient. So that's why patients feel better mentally. So there are many natural elements of healing existing in Bharat. Let's move ahead. So what happens when we meet people? We often use this terminology, personal space. We say, I want my personal space. And there is this social norm as well, that how, how much uh, at a distance you need to be from other person. So when we meet someone, we don't, realize that what whether we are taking the energy or giving if that person is very negative there is a terminology for that is energy suckers we feel drained after meeting such people we feel weak and exhausted after meeting to such people versus when we meet other uh, type of people and we feel like our energy is increased. So in Brahma Kumaris, it is taught that we shouldn't touch anyone because we don't know what kind of energy is bringing the other person. When a husband and wife is fighting, then also energy is exchanging. When they are loving each other, then also energy is ex uh, exchanging. If we are sitting in a group, then also the energy is affecting each other, whether we know about it or not. So this is all chakra healing. I like the tradition of India better. In India, we do Namaskar. And in Western countries, we shake hands.
whether we should do shake uh, we should shake hands or namaskar according to the chakra hili we should not shake hands in covid time we learn that we can transfer the virus but in bharat in india it is ancient tradition that we always do namaskar there was no intention of virus at that point but that pose is to protecting our energy from energy of others and stay at a particular distance only those who has or had positive energy it was allowed to touch only to those so we can see in the energy dynamics that we do the vihasa sessions it is a very good program from janki foundation and uh, we are doing that with uh, in india for past 15 years there's a doctor in india 86 year old he is doing surgeries he is doing performing such an rituals every day at the age of 86 and uh, that is all happening because of all this energy healing <laughs> he so in that vihasa training they show this picture this is gandhi ji and he is doing some sort of healing the person laying uh, in the bed had leprosy his name was parchur shastri leprosy was incurable disease in that time gandhi ji did not know uh, about this and when he came to know about this he brought him and uh, he used to do the dressing of the wounds of leprosy on his leg leprosy was very contagious and incurable disease in those times but even though gandhi ji treated this wounds he did not get leprosy because his energy was very positive there is a bk doctor in mumbai he is a very young doctor chest specialist he goes to tb hospital so in the hospital tb uh, uh, bacteria are everywhere in the air in that hospital but this brahma kumar he goes every day over there for past 3 years he never got tb why what's the reason in maharashtra this name is also very popular baba amte he used to work with leprosy patients as well there is another doctor uh, urologist brijesh singhal in the covid era Uh, when covid patients used to get admitted he was not even wearing mask and uh, he was treating patients he did not get covid this is out of our understanding how to uh, understand the logic behind it so if our energy is best 
then the external things don't affect us. So the mind has to be positive. That is my own experience. I had asthma at that time. And I was asked uh, to present a certificate, health certificate whether I am fit to work uh, with COVID patients. I was fit and I worked with COVID patients for two years. Nothing happened to me. I have rhinitis and I have uh, frequent itchy nose and I, I was even touching my nose so frequently, but nothing happened to me. I used to travel in public bus transportation as well. The driver conductor gets it because they are there all the time, but it did. I did not get it. There is a better word for chakra. There is no need for chanting any mantras for chakra. Energy is a better word for chakras. If your energy is better then the external bad energy would not affect so there are many chakras 114 but the basics are seven which are connected with the uh, hormonal glands in our body these chakras are the discs are not energy discs are not in our body actually not in our physical body we cannot see them whoever are not accepting uh, they say that if we cannot see it there is nothing like that existing there is nothing like subtle body so the soul in the body is uh, energy energy has the light and the light spreads throughout the body. So just like that, the subtle body has the light uh, and there are energy centers. And the sages in ancient India, they have seen this disc spinning. They are spinning in the body. And then they saw the locations of it. The locations are the topmost chakra. If you see in the picture, is out of the body. It is just above the head. And rest six are inside the body. So it starts from bottom to top. So number one is the root chakra. And then there is the, the Buladhar Chakra, Swadhisthan Chakra. The, then there is the Manipur Chakra that deals with the willpower. Then the Heart Chakra, Anaha Chakra that deals with love. Then there is Vishuddha Chakra in the throat that deals with truth. And then there is Sex Chakra in the center of the forehead that deals with insight. In the seventh, is a cosmic energy. I have seen in my Brahma Kumari's life that they are connected uh, through the knowledge. I came to know all these seven uh, discs, energy discs are matching with the seven virtues of the soul. Every soul has this basic seven virtues. And on the basis of these virtues, the physical body forms. 
all of these disks has the color and the positive side and the negative side. We are connecting this with the color and the virtue. So all seven chakras are related. So the root chakra deals with the survival instinct. Then comes the sacral chakra. It deals with the purity because all the sensual glands are there. The third is the willpower. It's solar plexus. Then the heart chakra deals with the love. And then the throat is the Vishuddha, literally means the truth. And the third eye means the wisdom. So if we focus on this uh, characteristics or the qualities, then we can heal the chakras or uh, the spinning uh, energies, discs better. We can balance this disc with the power of thoughts. We can balance this disc so that the energy flowing through the chakras, through the disc, will be pure and powerful. And when this is powerful, we will be working mainly in the Manamai and Vigyanmai koshas, like how we uh, saw the one of the earliest slides is the third and the in, inner internal energy bodies so there are three eternal energies so if we want to understand this concept very well this is a uh, game of the energy and this is being taught in the seven day course of Brahma Kumaris. So the uh, light point in the top right corner of the slide is the Supreme Father, the Supreme Energy, and that heals everything in us. And the second energy is the point shown in the head of the figure. And the third energy is the Prakriti, the nature. In, the, in Indian scriptures, it is also named as the dance of Shiva and Shakti. The Shiva is the highest God and the Shakti is the human body, human energy. If you see at this goddess figures, this is the aim and object of uh, Brahma Kumaris to be one like this. If you see that they are wearing a crown, and we also can see the halo behind their head. The supreme energy has described this as the crown of purity. That means the discs in their body are powerful in alignment. They, ha they have all the virtues, they have all uh, the complete health, they don't have any sickness. And when they are like this, they can have another crown of purity, how it is shown in the picture. So we can also open our, our chakras or discs and we can be pure like God goddesses
The discs are present in the center of the body along the spinal cord. And two, there are two uh, discs in the palms. So they are very, very minute in the structure and they cannot be seen in even X-ray, ultrasound, MRI, nothing. And they oscillate in different speed, creating different wavelength and color from red to violet. They create different energy. You can check the energy right now. What type of energy you feel? Positive, you feel tired, you feel irritated, or you feel happy. We can also call moods. These are the locations like this shown in the picture along the spinal cord. And the discs, discs are shown on the back side. So the spinal cord is on the back of the body. If you see, the visionaries have expressed this with the nature. We understand things better when we give example of nature. So if you see uh, in the first chakra, the petals are four and then there are eight and then there are more and more and more increasing. And then the, in the seventh chakra, there are like thousands of petals. So in the beginning of the history of Brahma Kumaris, uh, they used to do just Om uh, chanting, the sound of Om chanting. So in the, uh, this chakra or discs, they start from bottom up towards the head and they all of them has different sounds. And the Om is the last one. Om sound is for the seventh chakra. So the Raja Yoga is the Supreme Yoga. It starts from all these physical sounds ends, our physical chakra energies are at the top from there, the Raja Yoga starts. And then after Om, what comes? It's the silence. So what we know in Brahma Kumaris is when we do meditation, after chanting Om, if we are sitting in soul consciousness, we are in a blissful silence. And then that's the time where the thousand petal lotus flower is bloomed over the top of the head. And when we go to the doctor, explaining the uh, different, different complaints in the body. They are like local, local diseases in the body. And the doctors are also specialists. There, there is a specialist for each part of the body now. So they are specialist doctor for local areas. So just like that, in the ancient time, there were chakra healers. They used to heal the spin uh, discs. So based upon that, we can learn the meditation. So we will see each chakra in detail. We saw the uh, discs from behind, from the back. Now, if we see them in, from the front body,
Paramatma has asked us to experiment the yoga, the meditation. So how do we do that? It was my fortune that I was able to stay at Madhuban, the global center of Brahma Kumaris. There is a CAD section. They are doing research for meditation. So they are doing the research uh, of the Raja Yoga meditation, like take the energy from higher up, bring it in into the center of the forehead and then release it into the heart center. And then we used to do a lot of exercises with that. So there was one exercise was opening the mind exercise. So they used to remove the blockages from each level. And then the arteries were opening. So this is what was that uh, use of meditation, Raja Yoga meditation on Anahat, the heart, ch heart chakra. It's called, Sanskrit name is Anahat chakra. The sickness comes in the body, in the energy body. This is the basic, base of the sickness, base of the health. It is also mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. The, uh, that shloka of Gita explains that everything happens first in the non-visual form and then it comes into the physical form. The word for that is psychosomatic. Psych and soma. Psych is the subtle and the soma is body. For example, if someone has problems of anxiety and stress, initially there won't be any physical uh, changes in physical body. But if that continues for a long time, then the small changes in the brain arteries, brain capillaries will happen. And then it will spread more. So, so the disease first enters the body in a subtle form. And then there is another, in the second uh, portion of this slide is called the Kundalini, uh, Kundalini powers. Powers in Sanskrit are called Shakti. They say that Kundalini is like a snake body and it is coiled in the base of the spine and it is dormant there. And through the chakra healing, we can awaken the Kundalini powers. So the actual figure, uh, in the actual figure of the Kundalini powers is like there are two snakes rising up towards the head and they are interwoven at the each chakra center uh, situated in along the spine and they open the mouth on the top of the head. In the, in the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, it is mentioned that when these powers are awakened in the body and then what happens 
then it is explained there. In this picture, we can see there are two snakes rising from bottom of the spine towards the head. And when uh, in, in the right side of the slide, there is a light on top of the head, which means that the energy is awakened. In the allopathic system, they call uh, the energy sublimation. Sublimation means energy is going down. But in the meditation, it's energy liberation towards the higher, uh, higher and higher levels. And then there are auras and chakras, aura and the aura and chakra, and then elements. How elements and the chakras are connected. So the this energy discs are also connected with the elements of the nature. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, and then the time and space. This is also called Vedic healing. The, all of these five elements are uh, uh, manifested through our palm. So see the logic, the earth is heavy. So that's the bottom most. And then the water. And because uh, the urinary bladder is there, so water above that is where the digestive juices are there, the fire is there. So that is the Manipur chakra. And that's the fire element. And in the chest, lung, in the chest area, we have lungs, that is air. And then ether, there are sinuses. And, and the seventh most is above the head and there is nothing, it's the space. And then we move from the soul consciousness to the supreme consciousness. And when we are in that level, all these five elements will not if affect us. And then there is planets and chakras. Planets and this energy discs, discs are also connected. These chakras are the discs are not in the physical form, but they are just in the energy form. In the meditation, we will work on each one from bottom up towards the head. So we will sit in alert position. We will do the meditation with the music now. Sit relaxed. Relax from, relax both legs, thighs, and hips, back, shoulders. Today I felt that just like how I see this body, there are different 
energy bodies. There are five energy bodies and I'm traveling from physical body to the innermost, the blissfulness. As I feel closer to the energy, I feel myself as energy living in the center of two eyes in the forehead. There are two energies. I am energy and the Supreme Father, Supreme Energy. He is the Supreme Healer. His energy is entering in me. And then this energy is spreading throughout my body. As this energy is spreading in all over my body, all the blockages, energy blockages in my body are opening. And this energy is flowing freely in the whole body. All the blockages in the body are open. And all the energy channels are open. Each and every cell of my body is getting detoxified. My body in my mind, very peaceful, Focusing on my body, base of the spine, slightly up on the spine, around the navel level, in the heart center, as I move my consciousness, all the blockages are opening. The throat chakra. The third eye chakra. And then the seventh chakra. I am beyond the feel of this body. I am complete light. My body has healed completely. And I feel so light, peaceful and blissful. Shanti, 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 Om Shanti.